So uh, before we move on to talk more about consolidation, um, I'd like to have a, an interlude and talk a little bit about moments. So in the um, odometer test, the older fashioned rigs have a, a lever arm in which you use to apply uh, force to your or load to your sample. Um, you can get newer odometers that automatically add load to, uh, to your sample um, uh, hydraulically. Um, so what I'd like to do in this video is show you how to calculate the, the force that's going into your sample from that lever arm uh, via uh, moments. So a moment is a, a rotational force and it's calculated by multiplying the force by the distance away from the, the, the point at which it's, it's rotating, the, the pivot. Um, so if you have um, a, something like a seesaw where you have a, a, a beam and a, a pivot in the middle um, and you have two weights, weight one and weight two, of distance uh, x and y away from the pivot. If that beam wasn't moving, uh, we would say that it was in rotational equilibrium. And what that means is essentially the, the forces that are trying to, to rotate it about the pivot in this direction are equal to the, the forces that are, about, are trying to rotate it about the pivot in that direction. Um, or the, the moments. So um, you would take the moment about the pivot and you do that by taking the force, W1, and multiplying it by the distance. And we know that that has to be equal to the W2 multiplied by the distance. Uh, and that shows that rotational equilibrium has been, has been met. So what that means in terms of the odometer test is that we, well, in the odometer test, we have a beam that's um, pinned at one end. So the pivot is at one end of the beam. And at the end of that beam, we suspend a mass. Um, so we, we apply a force to the end of this beam. So the, the beam doesn't freely rotate, so it's resisted by another force, and that force is uh, uh, the, the force that's going through the, the sample. So it's resisted by the, the force that's going through the sample through the lid of the, of the odometer cell. So we'll call that the resistive force R. Now in a standard odometer, the ratio between the two distances, the ratio between the distance from R to the pivot and F to the pivot is 1 in 10. So this distance is equivalent to 1 and this distance is equivalent to 10. So if we take moments about the pivot, the, the force, uh, the moments that's rotating the arm in this direction, uh, and clockwise, is equal to F multiplied by 10. And that's been resisted by a moment um, caused by the, 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 the sample, resistive force in the sample. So that's equal to or multiplied by 1. So you can see that uh, the force R is equal to 10 times the force F. So if we, um, if we suspend 10 kilograms onto the end of our odometer arm, um, that's equal to, uh, so if you multiply that by the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8, or if we just call that 10, that's equal to 100 newtons worth of force. So if we um, suspend uh, 100 newtons onto the end of the, 10 kilograms onto the end of the lever arm, that's worth 100 newtons. Um, and, uh, that's actually putting um, 1,000 newtons or a kilonewton into our sample. So it's a way to, so the, the lever arm is really a way to, to increase the, the load going through our sample for a smaller amount of, of, of mass that we put onto the end of it. So that's why it's really quite useful. 